What's up guys, Christian Duke from StrengthAddicts.com. So I have to uh, retape my video on the alleged Evan Santapani slap, which apparently is still headline news in the bodybuilding world. And I um, want to go ahead and say that at first I really didn't want to touch it, but I saw that it was being covered on RxMuscle.com. It was uh, actually uh, MuscleSportMag.com, Joe Piotaro's magazine, which is phenomenal in print and online. They broke the story. They put out an article, uh, something uh, said... Uh, Evan sent a alleged slap, something to do about nothing, something like that. It was a good article, but I think it minimized the situation a little prematurely. Um, people on the message boards, bodybuilding.com, RX Muscle, maybe even Project Bodybuilding, everybody seemed to have an opinion, as they often do. And um, I think what upset me about it initially was the fact that it seemed that everybody was attacking this kid. You know I mean, they were basically saying, you know, he was a troll and a hater. And little did they know that he actually goes to one of the two best universities in the United States. Little did they know that he was an MPC competitor, been on stage, had a good physique, was in fact a fan of Evan Centipani's, did in fact meet Evan Centipani, had a photo with him. And, uh, you know, when you start looking at his side of the story, you're like, what did he have to gain by this? What did exactly did he get? He said, but before that, uh, Evan Centipani did put out a message on muscular development I didn't think it was particularly convincing. He never said, I did not slap that kid. All he said was that if you knew him, that the people that knew him would know whether or not he did it. And he also said that if, I guess if this kid continued that, or if this kid continued and it was attacking his reputation, that he might consider a lawsuit or something like that. It sounded like a defamation lawsuit type terminology and lawyers and this and that. And again, if you, you know, the whole thing with, uh, defamation lawsuits is that you know if this in fact never happened the alleged slap never happened then of course evan would be within his rights to sue the daylights out of this kid but if it did happen and he's you know threatening a defamation lawsuit it could also be perceived to be as some sort of a beefed up sort of cease and desist beefed up gag words shut the kid up you know what i mean uh if you look at bill cosby's situation before he was actually indicted he threatened to sue and actually did file suit for defamation against some of his accusers now i'm not saying bill cosby did it i'm not saying he didn't do it i'm not saying that evan did it i'm not saying he didn't do it but i'm just saying that if he did in fact slap this kid for whatever reason and threaten him with a defamation lawsuit it would essentially have the same effect of shutting him up for good um but then after i read evan's statement I contacted the powerhouse in question. The owners weren't there. They told me to call later in the day. But quite frankly, I didn't want to really speak to the owners just because I didn't want to put them in the spot. Uh, so then I went and spoke to the victim and or the alleged victim, I should say. And for the first couple hours, he exhibited a lot of traits that a victim normally would. You know, I've worked in a public defender's office. I've worked with victim advocates before. I've worked with uh, victims of domestic violence. So in all honesty, you know, a lot of the things he was saying, a lot of the ways he was acting to me, exhibited traits of a victim. For example, he did not, he turned me down for a podcast. Now, I know that when Joe Piotaro wrote his article, I don't know if he offered him a podcast or not. I, I would lean to say no, just because anybody does a podcast like this, giving someone, you know, on this neck of the woods, basically the victim of a potentially violent crime by a bodybuilder is going to burn a lot of bridges. And I don't think Muscle Sport Mag wants those headaches. Christian Duke of StrengthAddicts.com doesn't give a shit because Christian Duke of StrengthAddicts.com is after the truth. Not to say that Muscle Sport Mag or RX Muscle or the others aren't. It's just, um, it's just that I was. And um, he declined the podcast. And then I said, well, I'm going to write an article, you know, and he just basically said he didn't want his name mentioned and he didn't want, you know, um, his pictures used. And he would really prefer if I didn't use the name of the gym. And I, you know, and I, I you know, at first I was, you know, basically acquiescing to these requests and uh, but I talked to him more and he said that, you know, 10 people had witnessed this, that nobody ever believed him, you know, that he couldn't go back to the gym because he felt humiliated, that people were attacking him on the message boards and that he just wanted to put everything behind him, like he told MuscleSportMag.com. And to me, honestly, the whole thing about not being believed and being humiliated and just wanting to move on, it just really, to me, honestly made him very credible in my eyes. And uh, later on, you know, um, I was just having a little bit of a hard time with him because, you know, he just didn't want to, um, you know, he didn't want to use pictures or names or anything like that. And, and then he started telling me that I couldn't write the article because it was his story, because he lived it, because he didn't want to go through it again and this and that. Again, really talking like a victim. And I told him, I said, listen, 
you know, this story has already been broken by MuscleSportMag.com, RX Muscle. It's all over the message boards. I would be doing my readers a disservice if I didn't cover it. You know what I mean? But I will mention your name. I won't mention the gym. I won't use your pictures. And I kept my word on all those things. But he got a little, he got a little um, fresh with me. He got a little, uh, he was a little ungrateful. Because as a journalist, my only real requirement is to go after the truth. And as long as I don't intentionally deceive or negligently deceive, I don't really have any other requirement, you know what I mean, by law, ethically or morally either. Um, But I wanted to shield him as best as I could, and I just didn't think he was being very grateful. And then he started mouthing off and and saying, take a chill pill and and putting a lot of LOLs in there and all that. And that sort of took away some of the credibility that I had for him in my eyes. But at the same time... um, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, this kid was, if anything, consistently, he was scared, wanted to put it behind him. You know, he said that he got slapped in the face is what he told me. He said that it was in front of 10 people. He said that he paid his membership there. He couldn't go back. He felt humiliated. And he just felt like, you know, again, this is a kid that goes to one of the two best universities in the country, you know, with a promising career ahead of him, academically speaking who's competed, who's got a great physique, who's not a troll, who, in fact, in some message boards, actually has people defending him against a celebrity like Evan Sentapani. But on the other hand, we can't attack Evan Sentapani and say, you know, you did it because this kid is exhibiting traits of a victim. You know, Evan Sentapani also has a certain degree of bias against him because he is a celebrity, because he's an IFBB pro, because he's famous, because he's on the cover of magazines. And so people might say, well, you know, I believe this kid and not you just because, you know, you think you can get away with it when, in fact, the guy may not have done anything wrong. Um... So again, you know, I, I just think, and also the fact that the kid called the police, you know, I think that Muscle Sport Mag, you know, I think way too much on the fact that he didn't press charges. Just because he didn't press charges doesn't mean it didn't happen. If he called the police, a kid that goes to one of the two best universities in the country, I'm not even saying what school he goes to, but if he called the police knowing that 911 calls are recorded, knowing that it's a crime in and of itself to lie to police, um, you know, again, suggests to me that something did happen. You know what I mean? That this was not just some attempt at some online notoriety. I mean, he's not going to get the police involved, have them come, be ostracized from the gym, never be able to go back, be made a fool of online. Uh, just for what? What What does he get out of this? So, you know, I think really the bottom line here, and a lot of people want me to say what I think happened, you know, because I put out an Instagram video that was basically like a WTF, like, what the fuck, what happened? You know, I didn't know. I was seeing all these message boards. I was hearing about all these stories. I read the muscle, uh, not all these stories, all these message board posts and the story. There was just one story at first at musclesportmag.com. And I was getting all these DMs and messages and inboxes on Facebook, people asking me what happened. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one they were asked, probably like bombarding all the websites asking. And so I just put up a video saying, you know, it's, you know, seems something happened with Evan and uh, I'm going to try to get down to the bottom of it. And people were assuming that that was sort of like a tongue in cheek thing, like it was like a teaser. And I had like this article that I had written out already and that was going to come out and I was just going to like, you know, floor everybody with some insider knowledge. And, and I don't have any insider knowledge. I don't know what happened. I still don't know what happened. But I just think that it's wrong to um, write this kid off as a troll or a hater just because he didn't press charges or just because... He doesn't choose to be more adversarial and demand an apology or 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 get out there and just trash Evan Sentapani's name. Um, but I also don't think that because Evan Sentapani has not chosen to make you know you know uh, you know make a make a, a mountain out of a molehill. I don't know how the saying goes, but just because Evan Sentapani did it hasn't gone to all the websites and all the radio shows and all the TV shows. Uh, you know, denying these accusations that that somehow makes him guilty because it doesn't. I just wish that his statement would have been a little bit more direct. You know, what I mean that that you know a simple "I did not slap that kid" period would have been perfect, uh, as opposed to those of you that really know me know I wouldn't have done this, and those of you that really know me know that I stand up for what I believe in, and, and I and I say what I believe, and um, and if. People continue to attack my reputation. There may be a loss. All of that aside, if you would have just said, I did not slap that kid, period. End of story. But he didn't do that. So again, it, it, there's a lot of uncertainty. I guess that's really where I am right now. I'm uncertain. I don't know what happened, but I'm not throwing the book at this kid. And I'm certainly not of the opinion that he did all this for attention because that's just absurd. 
But I'm also not of the opinion that Evan Santapani is guilty just because he's famous and successful, because I think that's stupid. Um, that's where I stand. So please stop messaging me. <laughs> <laughs>